So yeah, so then we come through to this new reporting section. So um, again, in, in the old legacy software, you had reports in, in slightly strange places. Right. And what we've done with Overseer FM is bring it all together um, and try to make the focus a bit more of a visual representation of the results because because we think that, that, that allows people to make decisions better. So what you've got to start with is an overview of your farm. Um, and that particularly at the moment then highlights your end loss per hectare and also your total end loss per block. Um, and, and that allows you to look at some of these details around. So if we look at the terrace flats in terms of ter total end loss, then actually compared to the rest of the farm, it's not that big. Uh -huh. But relative to some of these other blocks, it's actually got some higher losses that are coming through. So it's losing nearly 32 kilos of N uh, uh -huh. per hectare. Okay, it's a lot less than the home block, but we know that we've got irrigation on that. Uh -huh. And so you know, we, may be, we may be satisfied that that's okay. So we might then want to identify, to drill into some of the details around, uh -huh. okay, well, why is the terrace flats losing this amount? And that's where we can look, drop down into this. And, and we've got this representation of each block in terms of what data have we got sitting against each block? So we can see that we've got animals against it. We can see we've got fertilizer. We can see on the river flats we've got we've got our centre pivot and we've got some solid effluent being applied. Um, and we can look at the individual loss numbers. So if we if we want to have a wee look at you know what's happening with this terrace flats, we can then look in there and go okay. Well, actually, as Carly was saying, does this actually represent? Did I put that application of sustain on? Um, in March, or did that actually get missed? How much of an impact that made? Won't make a big difference because, as we said earlier, it's actually these guys up here are the key driver around both the production and the losses that we've got coming through from the farm system. Um, but we want to make sure that we've got a good graphical representation of the farm system in that particular year. So, this comes back to the question I had in the first uh, section. If a devil's advocate here, I'm sure nobody would ever do it, but you can look at that and say, <laughs> right, that's my leaky block, I'll make that smaller and mm -hmm. I'll make my bush block or uh, yep. the other one a lot larger. Yep. Changing it retrospectively mm -hmm. like that to which is going to gain the system will mm -hmm. show up in the audit. It will because what will what will happen, and this is really the report that we right. think is 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 where um, you know we expect if if you're in a regulatory, well, it's it's got a, it's of use to the farmer because you can go through and do right. a double check. You can do it's of use to a consultant because you can go through and go actually yeah okay the blocks are there's there's the right blocks on here they're the right type of blocks they're the right hectares they're the right topography and then we've got all the climate soils pasture fertilizer irrigation and the losses that come out of the model for each of these blocks so it's useful for the farmer and their advisor if you're in a regulated area and you've got an audit process going on which is where we see this being captured and, and some of those things that we talked about where people might try to game the system um, this is a really easy one and this is what we're, we're emphasizing to regional councils and, and others is to say look what you need to see is this block details report uh -huh. um, and if you look at that and you compare you know this is our year end 2018 you can compare that to the year end 2017 uh -huh. if this pasture block here of hills has suddenly gone from 75 hectares to 50 hectares um, your auditor doesn't have to be worth much salt to be able to spot uh -huh. that um, and equally you know with, with when Carly was describing you, know, you can change your soil types year to year um, good luck defending that when you're discussing yeah. that with an auditor yeah. as to why your soil types have suddenly changed from one year to the next. So, um, I didn't want to harp on it, and, yes. but I know one of the things our environment team are really big mm. on is, I mean, good information and good information. Output. Absolutely. Also, you know, um, that these models have the uses other than just answering a regulator's requirement. Oh, the, that, that's content. a really, and I think that's and, when, you know, the, the key bit that sits yeah. behind Overseer FM is, is we're trying to, to take Overseer back to being a decision support mm -hmm. tool which can be used in compliance rather than the compliance tool which can be used exactly. in decision support. And good decisions require good information, so yeah. Absolutely. Uh, so you've got that overview there, which is, is probably the easiest one to go through. You've got the, the graphical visualization if mm -hmm. people would like to look at things in that form that you can go through and look at this stuff and look mm -hmm. at your stocking rates. Um, and then we get through into some of the details. So we can look at, you know, is our farm the right size? What we can look at our nutrient conversion efficiency, we can look at our greenhouse losses, greenhouse gas losses, where they're coming from and really the performance of each farm. And then within this, and this is kind of the irony, I guess, within, you know, everyone always talks about nutrient budgets created by Overseer. Uh -huh. The nutrient budget report is just one of the things which is generated by the software, and that drops in here, um, and we can look at that on a whole farm basis. Or on a particular block basis to see you know, uh -huh. what's what's coming into that block, what's being lost out of it, um, or more usually, yeah, absolutely, we look at it on a home farm basis. And one of the it's it's a bit of a semantic change, but it's actually quite an important one for the way people view the model. Uh -huh. um, when we look at um, nutrients removed, 
this wee section here and this line here used to talk about nutrients lost to water. Uh -huh. um, we've changed that to being what it actually is, which is nutrients lost from the root zone. Uh -huh. So the available science only tells us what happens down to 60 centimeters. Attenuation and catchment hydraulics um, and hydrography then account for what happens after uh -huh. that 60 centimeters. And it's a it's a it's a piece of science which has not been done, okay. um, and which a lot of work is needed on. So you're what saying there the root zone is 60 centimeters. That's that's what the the sci the available uh -huh. science only takes us to 60 centimeters. So yeah. if if we're going to go beyond that, then then we need some some considerable uh -huh. funding for the CRIs to do some work to look at what else comes into that. Uh -huh. um, but now we're actually labeling that correctly to say, look, these are the losses below the root from the root zone, um, which are modeled by overseer. Whether that goes to water or not will depend upon your subsoils and your catchment and your groundwater flows um, but this is what's essentially being lost from that top 60 centimeters so we can go through that we, again we've got things like the animal report so you can look at the summaries of, of, of where your animals are what your production is um, whether you've got your um, uh, distribution right across uh -huh. the farm uh, and then obviously the topic which is is becoming more and more to the to the uh -huh. to the top of everyone's agendas is greenhouse gas losses and this has been in overseer for quite a wee while um, but within the new software I think we've got a much better way of, of representing that for uh, farmers and their advisors and even for you know if you're reporting to meat companies and things um, for them to understand what are the losses in terms of methane n2o and co2 um, and where are they coming from uh, within the system and then you can even look at okay well actually you know my losses are predominantly coming from you know all my deer, my beef and my biggest loss my sheep are, are here and, and deer is third uh -huh. so we can look at some of these details in time we're going to be able to add in um, some of the bits that we had in the old software which is around things like um, you know transport of fertilizer to the farm how far away is your is your store but as we can see here you know when we're looking at co2 it, it's really quite small compared to the methane and N2O, it's the biological system, which is uh -huh. where we're losing the greenhouse gases. Um, but that allows us to look at, okay, well, where might there be some some, some things that we can manage um, and give us some ideas. And, and this is all taking values based on what New Zealand reports internationally um, and applying that to the individual farm. So you may be going to cover this, but leave aside whether it's greenhouse gases mm. or nutrient losses. We've talked about the typical year, what you do, what you've done on the farm. Can this be used for scenario modelling? So say, look, I have got this issue, yeah. what would make an impact? Absolutely. So if we go back to our farm account, so we've gone through and we've done our year-end 2018, uh, we're pretty happy. We might then say, actually, well, look, I want to do, you know, I've, I've made these I've made some pretty big changes because I've gone from 15 and loss uh -huh. and 4,700 4, 4, kgs of greenhouse gas to 26 N loss and 10,000 uh, kgs of, of, uh, of, N, of GHG loss. Um, uh -huh. I might want to then do a scenario to say, okay, well, what, what do I, what can I do to bring that number down to 20? Uh -huh. Maybe for a regulatory reason or maybe just because you, you, you want to reduce your losses out your system. Really simple to do and much easier than the old software. We can just go in and go, okay, I'm going to do a predictive. Um, reduce N loss. Um, and I can choose what I bring through. So I can uh -huh. bring through everything or I can say, I don't want to bring my animals or whatever. We can You uh -huh. can play with that as you want. Copy that through. Um, and now I've got a new system which brings us through exactly the same analysis. So if we go through, uh -huh. we can see we've got the same numbers up here. Um, but I've got a reduce end loss, and I've okay. done quite a few. And so this has no, this hasn't, doesn't have official status now. This is your chance to try and absolutely. Lock it up and, and the other bit around that as well is, is at this stage only, only my organisation. So when you create a user, you also become an organisation mm -hmm. of one. Um, so that's probably okay for a farm. You might have, you know, if, if, if you and I are working together, Aaron, I might add you to my organisation, uh -huh. and then we can both see this reduce end loss um, scenario. Um, but nobody else can see it at this uh -huh. stage. I've got to, sh if I choose then that actually I want to share it with a consultant, um, I can I can share it with a farm owner if I'm not, or I can share it with other people um, and and let them see what these analyses are. But each each analysis you can see. So the year ends the year end space is always shared with everybody. Uh -huh. Everybody who has access to this farm can see all of the year ends. Um, but when we look at predictives, we can see whether it's the whole farm, uh -huh. whether it's just my organization, or whether it's my organization and the owner. 
um, based on that. And then the last bit that we've got down here, which is, is, is a really important piece where you're farming in a regulated catchment, uh -huh. um, is how do you then report this information? So back in back in the old days, um, you used to have to go and send your file to, um, or get your advisor to send your file to the uh -huh. council. We now have this publish function. So if we look at our year end that we've just finished, we say, okay, well, we've done this. Um, and we're going to publish that version. So we've said we're going to publish it to our regional council, which in this case is Environment Southland. Um, it's our compliance report. Uh -huh. It's either our draft or it's our submitted. And we can put a, a consent number against that. Um, and you could even say it's actually um, for Tom to review. Uh -huh. Don't worry about spelling at this stage. Um, and we can publish that through. And, okay. and that will then go through to uh, Environment Southland in their login. When they next log in, they will see that there's a, an analysis here for Erskine Hills. Um, and they'll be able to see that it's for Tom to review. So they can see all these details. Uh -huh. And if we go into this, what you're sending to that person is, is only a read-only version mm -hmm. of your results. Mm -hmm. They can't see the modeling that's gone on behind it. They don't need to get into that detail. Yeah. Um, but what they can see is all of that information that we've entered mm -hmm. uh, in terms of the block details, as we said. So if we're doing that um, analysis that we talked to of, of, you know, have we changed the farm? They can see all of this stuff within here. So that's a really important mm -hmm. um, advance, we think, in giving the farm owner control over who they share information with and how they share it, um, but still keeping this information useful um, and, and able to be shared with others. The key, so if you make changes, go back and alter something, did they read only version they get automatically have those changes? No, so you need to go, to go, so go you'd have to go back yeah. again. So it's, so if we look at, you know, the, and that's a really good example around this, is to go, if we look at our examples, so this is now the eighth version of one that I've sent to Environment Southland. Uh -huh. So you might have a, yep. a, a, a an iterative process going on with a, you know, hopefully you're working constructively with your regional council, yep. you've got a good man, land management officer, you can send it to them, they can have a wee look at it and they go, actually that doesn't look quite right, uh -huh. um, how about we look at doing and, and particularly then around yeah you know, that's that's for um, for a year end you can do the same thing for a predictive so you can you know if we're working through that predictive scenario we can then look at how many how many changes do we want to make and, and get some advice from them in an iterative process rather than it just being a, you know, this is what it is and, yeah. and, and But again, it, it doesn't, they don't have a copy of that per se on their own machine. The, the no. version control still stays with Yeah, the absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Excellent. And that's, that's Overseer FM. I think there yeah. we go. All right. So, look, we've um, covered a fair lot, a fair bit. And at the start, we talked about a couple of the key messages. Um, mm. Basically, you've got, uh, again, another elevator pitch to yeah. sum it all up. What's the key bit? <laughs> yeah, it, and it is that key, that key piece around, look, you know, we've, we've put the farmer at the center of the new software. It's the farmer's account. It's the farmer's information. Um, Overseer FM is predominantly a decision support tool to help farmers envir be environmentally and economically sustainable. It takes that 30 years of science which sits behind Overseer and, and makes it more accessible to support your decisions on farm. Um, we think the, the new software makes it more approachable. It saves you or your consultant time. Um, it gives you greater control over, over your ac accuracy. And I think as, as Carly said, I think the other piece as well is, you know, Overse Overseer always gets talked about. Overseer, everyone has an opinion on Overseer. Um, Overseer is the model. Overseer is the software. Overseer is now some people as well. Um, we're here to help. Uh -huh. um, if you get stuck, use use the help desk. That's what that's what we're all here for. Um, we're on the website. We're on Twitter. Um, get in touch with us. We want to hear your views. The, the software will continue to develop, both in terms of its usability and also the science sitting behind that. Um, and over the next few months, we're going to look at how we share. Um, in a lot more detail than has happened in the past, what we're working on and when that might come to fruition, so that people have got an insight into how their model is working, because uh -huh. you know, we are moving to a, a, a charged service uh -huh. um, and in January, uh, and so you know it's gonna be important that, that we have that relationship with our farmers uh -huh. uh, and with our users uh, from here on in. All right. And Carly, you're sitting there looking very relaxed, but do you have anything else you'd want to add before we wrap up? Um, I, I just, I am at the end of the help desk um, mm -hmm. uh, for Beaverland. They, they know, um, some of the staff will know that, that I was the previous environmental data analyst. Um, 
and so I, I understand chip and beef farming quite well so there's a lot of questions that I can answer there at any stage they they get stuck or they want to ask a question or they've heard something or even better as, as Alistair said if they can think of um, a way to enter data more easily or an improvement or something they'd like to see um, the only way that gets recorded is by coming to me um, and we put that into our system and we assess based on, on needs but it is about we are absolutely um, available for people to talk to um, and we are always looking for feedback from users um, and, uh, and it doesn't have to be someone who's used it for five years it can be a new person who thinks actually this doesn't make sense to me um, what you do is email me at mm. helpdesk org.nz, <laughs> and I get those types of questions all the time. Yeah. Um, I'm here to help. Excellent. All right, and that's the idea of the, these videos or this video as well, is to try and, and cover off some of the key things, but there's a lot there. There's bound to be perhaps something we've missed or yes. people will watch it, there'll be a question that come up. Let us know because we're not, this isn't a, a, a done and dusted thing. We can do another follow up, frequently asked questions video perhaps at some stage, and as you add other features or mm. things develop with, yeah. with Overseer. So um, it's a, it's certainly not a, not a necessarily a finished project at this time. So look, um, Carly Slews, customer support specialist. We had a bit of debate around your title at the start when you were in here, we got it right. And Alistair Taylor, business development manager from Overseer. Thank you very much for your time. Uh, Carly, thank you very much for handing out your email address. You may not regret that. But in the meantime, look, thank you all, and uh, we will be in touch. Cool. Cheers. Bye -bye. Thanks, Aaron.